Greetings from St. Andrew the Apostle Catholic Church. Wherever you are, we are happy you have joined us. Tonight we celebrate the most solemn feast of the year, the Easter Vigil. A worship aid is available on the parish website, standrew.org. It is also available in the recent parish email communication. We invite you to participate however you are able. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon us the fire of your glory, sanctify this new candle, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desire that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor. Through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, His are the seasons and the ages. To him be glory and dominion now and forever. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Light of Christ, thanks be to God. Light of Christ, thanks be to God. Light of Christ, Thanks be to God. 
Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy. Echoing the mighty song of all God's people. For Christ has ransomed us with his blood and paid for us the price of Adam's sin to our eternal Father. This is our Passover feast when Christ, the true Lamb, is slain whose blood consecrates the houses of all believers. This is the night when first you saved our fathers. You freed the people Israel from their slavery and led them dry shod through the sea. This is the night when Christians everywhere washed clean of sin and freed from all defilement, are restored to grace and grow together in holiness. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. What good would life have been to us had Christ not come as our Redeemer. Father, how wonderful your care for us, how boundless your merciful love. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. Oh, happy fault, O oh, necessary sin of Adam, which gained for us so great a Redeemer. The power of this holy night dispels all evil, washes guilt away, restores lost innocence, and brings mourners joy. Night truly blessed when heaven is wedded to earth, and we are reconciled with God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, receive our evening sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. Accept our Easter candle. May it always dispel the darkness of the night. May the morning star, which never sets, find this flame still burning. Christ, that morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all the world, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I would invite you to look around, behold your faces, behold the light of Christ in one another. This is who we are, the baptized, the redeemed in Christ. You may extinguish your candles, and we will now begin our solemn vigil.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Send your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above and the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water God called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And God made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile. Multiply and fill the water of the seas. 
and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make people in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created people in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and all the living things that move on the earth. See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food, and so it happened. God looked at everything that was made, and found it was very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God finished with the work that was done. God rested on the seventh day from all the work that was undertaken. of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two. The Israelites may pass through it on dry land, But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. 
The column of cloud, also leaving the front, took up its place behind them. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel, but the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the calm of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic. He so clogged the chariot wheels that they could hardly drive, and with that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. Chariots are cast into the sea. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Oh, sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea.
cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot. Fear and loneliness. Death and emptiness. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot, hate and prejudice, chains and slavery. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The word of Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in this very day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your hand, now you bring about as the salvation of all the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, Come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not. And nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be 
that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of our world, who by the preaching of the prophets unveiled the mysteries of the present age, increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do we progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up within the church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service and love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through death like the, his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin for a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
Christ our Passover and his sacrifice for us. Let us feast with joy in the Lord, the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. After the Sabbath. As the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he was going before you to Galilee. Before There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on the way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. You remember the official Catholic Latin greeting for Easter, and your response is Alleluia, Alleluia. Resurrexit, secut dixit. Alleluia, Alleluia. He is risen as he said. Alleluia, Alleluia. Now you also remember, I hope, the tradition of the Rhesus Pascalis, the Paschal or Easter joke, which came about because the greatest joke of all time was played on the devil. He thought that he had won on Good Friday, but the joke was on him. God won the resurrection on Easter Sunday. Here are a few facts about the coronavirus. Half of us are going to come out of this quarantine as amazing cooks. The other half are going to come out with a drinking problem. Remember how we used to spin the toilet paper like we were playing Wheel of Fortune? Now we turn it like we're cracking a safe. We need to practice social distancing from our refrigerators. So where did you decide to go for Easter? The living room or the TV room? There is, this is a public service announcement. Every few days, try on your jeans just to make sure they still fit. Pajamas will help have us all believing all's well in the kingdom. One woman wrote that homeschooling seemed to be going well, but there were two students suspended for fighting and one teacher fired for drinking on the job. I don't think any of us expected that when we changed the clocks, we'd go from the standard time to the twilight zone. Quarantine day five, one lady wrote that she went to a restaurant called The Kitchen. You got to gather all the ingredients and make your own meal, she said. She has no clue how this place is still in business. Day five of homeschooling. One of the Lamonsters called in a bomb threat. Nowadays, we're getting excited when it's time to take out the garbage. What should we wear? 
I saw a classified ad in the newspaper, single man with toilet paper seeks woman with hand sanitizer for good, clean fun. The father told me on day six of homeschooling, his child just said, I hope I don't get the same teacher next year. But remember, it's better six feet apart than six feet under. Enough nonsense. Philosopher George Santanyana inherited a substantial amount of money, and he decided to resign his teaching post. In the midst of his final crowded lecture at Harvard University, he glanced out the window, and he saw a forsythia bush beginning to bloom in the muddy snow. He stopped, picked up his hat and coat, and headed for the door, where he stopped and explained to all the stunned students I can't finish that sentence. I have an appointment with April. He had a new priority. We have an appointment with Easter. And we have been given a new priority. Three moments to my madness, three points for you to ponder. First, what is life? Second, what is an Easter life? And third, what does an Easter life look like? First life. It is said that a person needs just these things, just these few things to be truly happy in the world. Someone to love, something to do, and something to hope for. We have those things in our faith in Jesus Christ. The one who has conquered sin and death and brought us salvation. And after that, what more do any of us need what more do any of us even want? Even as we shelter in place, we enjoy the presence of the risen Christ who remains always with us. For far too many, life is a pocket full of regrets, if onlys, I should haves. Many people could be summed up like this. First, I was dying to finish high school and start college. Then I was dying to finish college and start working. And then I was dying to get married and have children. And then I was dying for my children to grow old enough that I could return to work. Then I was dying to retire. And now I'm dying. And suddenly I realized I forgot to live. The reality is that we no longer live in a landscape of wonder that inhabited the lives of so many pre-modern people. As typically modern, we live mostly in ennui. We're bored jaded, cynical, flat, burned out. When the skies finally roll back like a scroll, scroll and the angelic trumpet sounds, many people are going to yawn and say, well, it's pretty good social effects, but the plot's way too traditional. If we were not so bored and empty, we would not have to stimulate ourselves with ever-increasing doses of sex and violence and stuff and constant busyness. For many of us, it's taken a pandemic for us to wake up and realize that there is a better way to live life. We live in the most fantastic fun and games factory that has ever been invented, the computer age. And so often we're bored, like a spoiled rich kid in a mansion surrounded by a thousand expensive toys. Medieval people, by comparison, were like peasants in toilless hovels. And yet they found the world around them fascinating. Occasions for awe and wonder seemed to abound. Birth and death, love and light, darkness and wind and sea and fire, and sunrise and star and tree and bird and human mind and God and heaven. All these things have not changed, but we have. The universe has not become empty and we full. It has remained full and we have become empty, insensitive to its fullness, cold-hearted. Irma Bombeck wrote this piece entitled, If I Had My Life to Live Over, I Would Have Talked Less and Listened More, I would have invited friends over to dinner even if the carpet was dirty and the sofa faded. I would have eaten popcorn in the living room and worried less about the dirt if somebody wanted to light a fire. I would have taken the time to listen to my grandfather ramble about his youth. 
I would never have insisted the car windows be rolled up on a spring day because my hair had just been done. I would have burned the pink candle sculpted like a rose before it melted in the attic. I would have sat down on the lawn with my children and not worried about grass stains. I would have cried and laughed less while watching television and more while watching life. I would have shared more the responsibilities carried by my husband. I would have gone to bed when I was sick instead of pretending the earth would go into a holding pattern if I weren't there for the day. I would never have bought anything just because it was practical, wouldn't show dirt, or was guaranteed for life. Instead of wishing away nine months of pregnancy, I'd have cherished every moment and realized the wonderment growing inside me was the only chance in life to assist God in the making of a miracle. When my kids kissed me impetuously, I would never have said later, now go wash your hands for dinner. There would have been more I love you's, more I'm sorry's, but mostly given another shot at life, I would seize every moment, look at it and really see it, live it, and never give it back. Second, what's an Easter life? What difference does it make that you and I believe in the resurrection of Christ? What difference does it make that we believe that we will be resurrected one day. One author talks about the problem with woofing. You know, all the negative naysayers, the downers, who always have an objection for whatever is going on. He says that this woofing bemuddles so much of our lives. To know and serve God, he writes, is of course why we are here. A clear truth that like the nose on your face is near at hand and easily discernible, but can make you dizzy if you try to focus on it too hard. But a little faith will see you through. When the country goes to the dogs, the cats have to learn to be circumspect and have faith that all this woofing is not the last word. So what is the last word? Gentleness is everywhere in daily life the sign that faith rules these ordinary things through cooking and small talk, social distancing but still being friendly, storytelling, making love, fishing, tending animals and sweet corn and flowers, through sports, music and books, raising kids, keeping in touch and looking out for our elderly friends, relatives and neighbors, all the places where the grace soaks in and grace shines through. How do we get that kind of life, that resurrection perspective? Well, right now, it's finally been thrust upon us. We have the time that we have so desperately needed to pray because we're usually moving too fast for too long, about far too little, We've often ended up pursuing somebody else's dream of success and happiness, and we've missed discovering our very own. We miss love and friendship because we're too busy looking for our next promotion. We trade eternal life for a bigger house or a house at the beach. Doesn't all of this look so different now than it did just two months ago? A prayer could help. Slow me down, Lord. Ease the pounding of my heart by the quieting of my mind. Steady my hurried pace with the vision of eternal, the eternal reach of time. Give me, amidst the confusion of these days, the calmness of the everlasting hills. Break the tension of my nerves and muscles with the soothing music of the singing streams that live deep in my memory. Teach me the art of taking minute vacations, of slowing down to look at a flower, chat with a friend, pet a dog, read a few lines from a good book. Let me look upward into the branches of the towering oak and know that it grew strong and great because it grew slowly and well. Slow me down, Lord, 
and inspire me to send my roots deep into the soil of life's truly enduring values. This may well be the great gift of living in a time of pandemic. Finally, what would an Easter life look like? St. Augustine put it this way, it's not a great thing to live long, nor even to live forever, but it is a great thing to live well. A piece of graffiti on a New York subway expressed it well. You can pinch my lips so I can't blow my horn, but my fingers will find the piano. You can slam the piano lid on my fingers, but you can't stop my toes from tapping like a drum. You can stomp on my feet to keep my toes from tapping, but my heart will keep swinging in 4-4 time. You can even stop my heart from ticking, but the music of the saints will never cease. That person knew resurrection life from the inside. But it's not a particularly complicated thing. It's not out of any of our reach. It's not impossible for any one of us tuning into this empty church with a small group of people with very full hearts. Why? Because it doesn't come from us. Resurrection living comes from Jesus Christ, from God. God who raised up Jesus and sent the women scurrying to share this good news. Raises us up in baptism and sends us scurrying to share this same good news with a world that desperately needs to hear it. A few years ago, a nationwide poll asked, what word or phrase would you most like to hear uttered to you sincerely? Can you take, take a guess? What's the first one? I love you. First thing everybody wanted to hear. Second, you're forgiven. And number three, believe it or not, is supper is ready. <laughs> All of these are possible for us even in a COVID-19 age. Maybe especially in a COVID-19 age. To say to others and to recognize that God is constantly saying them to us, I love you as God's unconditional promise that is made manifest in the resurrection. It's celebrated every Easter. It's remembered every time we gather for the Eucharist. You are forgiven is God's undeserved and unmerited and unconditional grace that is forever being poured out upon us. It's there even before we ask for it. And supper is ready is God's invitation to this feast, this banquet that we hear every time we come for the Lord's Supper. Happy are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. Easter life surrounds us. Do we even recognize it? But Easter life is being lived all around us by people we know and love right here in our own parish. Look at those who work with the Brown Bag Ministry, Catholic Social Ministries, Western Wake Crisis Ministry, Habitat for Humanity, people who volunteer anywhere, anytime, those who coach kids, who act as scoutmasters, who cook for funeral luncheons, who serve on committees, who pray for all that it may be done for God's glory and his kingdom. Easter life is there in every doctor, nurse, technician, housekeeper in our hospitals, risking their lives to care for those stricken by a virus. There is so much Easter life around us that is literally busting out and spilling out all over. But we shouldn't wait. As my mother always said, it's later than you think. Reminds me of the doctor who telephoned his patient. Joe, he said, I have the news from your tests. I need you to come to my office immediately. In less than 30 minutes, Joe was in the doctor's office. Joe said to the doctor, I've got bad news and I've got worse news. The bad news is that you're only going to live for 24 hours. Joe interrupted, doctor, that's terrible news. What could possibly be worse than that? Well, I tried to call you yesterday. God has been trying to call us since the day we were born. Does it take a pandemic to finally get our attention? So I'm suggesting that we make a decision today to live as though Easter has already occurred to us because it has. To decide that we will be cheerful even in pain. We will be optimistic in a time of difficulty and pandemic. 
We will be generous in our donations of time, talent, and treasure, especially at this time, that we will recognize that the Easter life that we have been given is a gift that is to be used for the sake and benefit of others. And then have fun. The world needs people who laugh and help everybody else to laugh. We don't have to look like we swallowed a pickle to be holy. The saints were full of life and laughter and fun. If you read their biographies, they're real characters. Characters. And once you've made your decision to live an Easter life, we might want to remember this. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth. He spoke of the last date with tears. But he said that what mattered most of all was the dash between the years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on the earth. And now only those who love her know what that line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, and the cash. What matters is how we live, and love, and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left. We could be at dash mid-range. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real, and always try to understand the way other people feel, be less quick to anger, and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved them before. If we treat each other with respect, more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a while. So when your eulogy has been read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of things they say about how you spent your dash? St. Andrew's Parish, You've made my life abundantly rich these last two years by the way you've lived out this Easter mystery. I hope that I one day will live it as well as you. And I long for the day when we all be back at church together. Thank you for tuning in. Never surrender hope. Christ triumphs always and everywhere, including over a virus. Resurrects it, seek it, deeks it. He is risen as he said. Dear brothers and sisters, we now ask the Lord our God to bless the water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he renew us that we may be faithful in the spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for all who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, Graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also make water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received 
and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who will receive baptism this Easter season. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. now would relight our baptismal candles as we renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance has concluded, we renew the promises of our baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so we face the West, as did the early church when they rejected all that was evil and sinful. This way, right? So I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. And the church faced the East when they uh, professed their faith because they believed that Christ would come from the East at the end of time. So I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Jesus Christ our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Okay. You may be seated. Now let us offer our petitions. For all those in this parish community and throughout the world, may we ever be mindful of our baptismal call to preach the good news of Easter care for the suffering, and seek justice for all who are oppressed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For government leaders, that they seek unity over division, hope over fear, and life over death, especially during this crisis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who are desperately seeking resurrection, may they find during this Easter season hope to persevere, Continuing their journey from death to new life in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Jeremiah, Armando, and all the elect preparing to receive the sacraments at this Easter season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all health care and hospital workers, 
that they may be instruments of your healing power and keep safe from harm during this coronavirus outbreak, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, including Monsignor Jerry Lewis, Sandy Hughes, Bob Camia, Dan Camia, and all who are affected by the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the prayers in our book of intentions, for those who have asked for our prayers, and for the prayers of all here, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have died, including Dan Craig, Paul Reed, and Lawrence Adamsic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Loving God, you have given us infinitely more than we could ask for or even imagine. Hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, our loving Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your people with these sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death by rising, restored our life. And so with angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Luis Raphael, our Bishop, all clergy, religious, the elect, and all who seek you with sincere hearts. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, Andrew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord is now Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your friends, I leave you peace. Peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant to us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to share at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Not my Savior, word, my soul shall be Let us pray. Pour out upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make all you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity. And, his in, and in his compassion, defend you from every evil. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, 
may you who celebrate the gladness of this Paschal feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal life. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.